What's up guys, welcome back to another edition of Question of the Week. Now we're gonna take one question each week from the comments sections on one of our videos and we're gonna answer it in depth with its own video. Uh, I know a lot of people really liked the format of this last week, so here we go again. This question here is from Lucas Bosch and he says, sup Bryce, period. I was curious about your training based on measure the velocity of the bar and how that impact on your programming. So, uh, maybe a little bit of lost in translation there, but what Lucas wants to know is how I use velocity based training and how that impacts my programming uh, and my progression. Now, I get asked hundreds of questions about what that string is on my bar, uh, and it's an open barbell unit. It's made by a company called Squats and Science, and uh, I managed to get a hold of a second hand one. What they do is they 3D print them in batches. And when they do so, they build a bunch, they sell them all, and then they're done, they're out. So they made the version one, version two, most recently version three, and now they're working on a new one. I got a hold of a version two. It's a pretty cool little unit. It Bluetooths to my phone, it sends everything right over there so I can look at past workouts. With a click of a button, it'll update everything to a Google Drive spreadsheet. Uh, and this is not uh, an advertisement, I have no affiliation with them, I've just used the unit and I really like it. Uh, squats and science if you want anybody to talk about your new unit or you want to send that to anybody when it comes out You just let me know Anyways, I really like it and uh, The way that I've been using velocity based training is essentially to increase the resolution of my decision making based on my RPEs or to rather uh, to increase the resolution of, of my RPE ratings per set so it comes down to velocity per lift and what it what it's going to necessitate is that you first off collect a lot of data now you just want to attach the thing if you have something like this or you're interested in using it you want to attach it and just use it a bunch to start off with once you've gotten maybe four or five weeks of training in there uh, and you're pairing these velocities with rpes you can begin to build uh, a sort of correlation between the speed of a certain lift or variation of lift and the rpes Moving forward from that, anytime you have a question like, hmm, I wonder if that was an eight or an eight and a half, or that felt really light, let's look at the data. It can help you make that decision on whether or not that was actually an eight. Because I know for me, uh, my squat, my equipped squat RP eights tend to be between 0.27 and 0.3 or so. Anything slower than that is probably creeping up into that nine uh, or, or eight and a half territory. For my benches, however, they're usually a lot slower. Now I know I can get away with about a 0.18 or 0.19 for my bench RPE8 uh, and my deadlifts as well are usually around 0.2 for an RPE8. So it's going to be very individual, it's going to depend on even uh, lift to lift like, I, like, I've, like I've said here, um, depending on what lift I'm doing, the speed and RPE correlation will change. And I imagine with a more skilled and adept and experienced hand than my own, you'd be able to uh, create a sort of velocity chart or table to be able to quickly look up those correlations to help you make decisions during your training. Now I think where this comes in most valuable is going to be A, calculating your estimated one rep maxes and ensuring that you have realistic expectations if you're heading into a competition setting, uh, and B, increasing your ability to make quality training decisions in a given session based on your ramp up or warm up work. Uh, a lot of times, for example, when I'm pulling my equipped deadlifts, I pull 320 kilos as my last warm up single. Based on the speed of that, I can assess whether or not I'm lifting well that day or not. Now obviously it's very contextual, maybe it was just a bad rep or an exceptionally good rep, but as a general rule of thumb, the faster that last warm up goes, uh, as long as you're sort of up in that range where you're still being challenged, I don't think that the speed with which I deadlift 70 kilos has any impact on my top end work. But once you get within the range, uh, I think that you're better able to assess the day's performance based on earlier sets and reps and make better training decisions about what you put on the bar. So that's my thought process and my ideas behind it. I know there's a lot of emerging research right now. I actually, one of my clients just did his thesis on the relationship between RPE training and the velocity based uh, components of things. Uh, so there's a lot of really cool research out there. Now I know it's really easy to say, this is what the science says, or there are studies that support this viewpoint. But what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna show you guys these. That's something that I wanna start doing a lot more on this channel, is instead of saying, this is what the science says, we're actually gonna take you through some of the studies uh, and what specifically they say. In this case, 
about velocity-based training. With that being said, let's get into the science behind what I'm saying. There are a few important studies that I believe can help illustrate the how and why of productively including velocity measures in your training. The first thing I wanna talk about is, is it even accurate or reliable? There was a study in 2018 by Banyard et al. Uh, that found velocity measures were reliable between 20% and 100% of one rep max given uh, an individual lifter and feeling relatively the same day to day. Now, uh, this was specifically for a metric called peak velocity. There were three measured in the study, but peak velocity was more accurate beyond 90%. And I think that's important to point out because as power lifters, we're very often working with weights between 90% and 100% of our max in training. Now into the how. How do you incorporate velocity-based metrics into your training. Well, first off, you need to find a way to measure them. Now that's going to be using a unit like what I have from Squats and Science or many of the other options available on the market. And that's probably its own video in its own right for another day. Once you've found a way to measure velocity, you're going to need to establish a personal velocity profile. Now, essentially velocities will vary between individual lifters, and there are even differences noted between the sexes. There was a study in 2018 by Torahan et al. that found that men tend to move lighter weights faster, while women are able to move weights closer to their one rep maxes with a lot more speed than the men. Now, to wrap it all up, the way that I use velocity metrics personally is in conjunction with RPE. And I believe this is effective because the absolute objectivity of velocity measures really helps to complement the relative subjectivity of RPE measures. And they kind of make up for the other's weakness uh, and form a more accurate and complete picture of what's going on in training. Don't just take my word for it though. Vasilobre Fernandez et al. found in a 2018 study that errors in load estimation can be greatly reduced by using velocity in conjunction with subjective scales like RPE and RIR or reps in reserve. Anyways guys, that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in. Let us know if you have any other questions. Uh, I'm really uh, a big fan of being able to use some of the literature to answer these questions and we're going to do our best to continue to hold ourselves to that standard, making sure that the information we put out there is quality and backed up by science. If you like the live video, leave a like, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment if you have any questions about any other topics. We'll see you guys next time.